But let's let's move on to to kind of um, the hero of the piece, really, Robert McCracken. Um, I mean, he started off as a excellent world class middleweight, um, and he's he's going on to greater and bigger things in the professional uh, in training with professionally with with Cole Froch and. With the amateurs, he's just going from strength to strength with what he's doing with the British team. What does he mean to the team? Well, they do have a great team of, of coaches. You know, Robert yeah, Crack yeah, is yeah. performance director, yeah. but there, there's several other kind of podium coaches yeah. who are going to be there in the corner, who are obviously crucial, as well as the yeah. support staff. And, you know, Robert Crack always mentions them when you when you try to interview he is, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've got to see, you know, you see he is clearly the, the leader of the operation. And um, actually, the, the team doctor, Dr. Wyatt Loosemore, who's been there for years, really said, you know, he couldn't emphasise enough what a contribution uh, Rob McCracken has made. Yeah. And the way he phrased it was he kind of enabled and empowered everyone to do their jobs. So it seems like yeah. for this cycle, they've got all the right support in, in place, they've got all the yeah. right boxes, and Rob McCracken has got the whole machine, all, all the parts of the machine functioning well together. Yeah. So yeah. he really. He's got to take a lot, of, a lot of credit for how well they've done. Okay, let's move on now to. Um, I mean, it's in London. I mean, it's the, the weather's perked up ridiculously in the last few days. Well, will, it, will these these young men and women be thinking it's it's their destiny that they're reaching? You know, they've reached their peak at a time when the Olympic Games are held in their home country. I mean, how how, how much of a, a factor do you think that can be in their medal hopes? Um, I, th I think it's a huge factor. You know, it doesn't get. Obviously, it doesn't get bigger than the Olympics. It doesn't get better boxing in your in your hometown. You know, in amateur boxing, is a subjective sport. Yeah, when the yeah. crowd roar, that kind of puts pressure on the judges to to score a punch. Um, and I think it's also helped the team in the sense that you know, obviously, a lot of top amateurs do will turn professional. The fact that they had London London 2012 as the goal has helped the team kind of retain retain their talent. So it's um, you know, it's. It, it was important as of when we, when we won the bid, so that you know all those yeah. years ago, yeah. when these boxers were young, they could they could pin their dreams on this moment. So it's, yeah. now's the time. Now when it's yeah. when it's all happening. Well, let's just just remind everyone there is a really really detailed uh, Olympic preview that John has done in this week's uh, Boxing News. Uh, you can find that online via on our app store, uh, boxingnewsonline.net forward slash apps. Um, available on the newsstands from Thursday. Um, also, John, you're going to be there every day and working tirelessly. Uh, the boxing, I believe, is it half eleven? It goes on till most nights. Most nights, yeah. John's going to put up a blog every day. He's going to keep everybody informed with that. We're going to have our own uh, special micro site, boxingnewsonline.net forward slash Olympics, uh, and you'll be able to find all the information uh, that John has given us there. And we're really, really grateful to him for that. Thanks, big man. Right, let's move on. The Irish team now. The, 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 there's one or two useful looking contenders in the Irish team as well, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. I mean, if, if anyone's a lock for gold, Katie Tay, the yeah, Irish yeah, female yeah. lightweight, she's won everything. Yeah. She's at her peak. Finally, women's boxing is in the Olympics. Um, you know, she's a huge, she's a huge star over there, and she ought to be a huge star of the games. Yeah. But they've got other good boxers as well. Uh, Darren O'Neill, their their middleweight. Yeah. You know, he's a he, you know he's a tough operator. Uh, John Joe Nevin, bantamweight, you know, Luke Campbell only just, just right. edged him uh, at the Worlds. Uh, Michael Conlon is a young flyweight yeah. who, who can't, you know, he can move, he can fight when he has to. You know, he, he came through almost out, not, yeah, almost out of nowhere at the Worlds, and now he'll have improved even more. So again, uh, you know, he had a great fight with Selby back, yeah. in, back in 2011, and if they meet again, it'll probably be even better this time. They've got yeah they've got sorry five right, five right. men and, and, and one girl so they've got a team of six right but again they're, they're all ones ones to watch. I mean going back to Katie Taylor I mean she she's she's likely to start as favourite. Is how difficult is it do you think going into going into the games as favourite and, and waiting for this for so long? It's it's almost it's, it's almost harder isn't it to, to with the weight of expectancy on your shoulders than it is to go in as. Yeah, but she, I mean, she's been a massive favourite at every tournament yeah. she, she's been in, and you know, their practical advantages, it'll be seeded, so you can yeah. get a fight at the start. There are only 12 girls in yeah. their weight class, so again, you don't have to win as many bouts yeah. to get to the final as you do. Um, and yeah, so it, obviously it'll put pressure on her shoulders, but the judges watching and the crowd watching, are, are kind of going to be expecting her to win. Yeah, yeah. And you know, maybe that won't have any any 
be a, be a factor at all. Right. But if it is, it kind of it, it might help her kind of yeah. score points, touch yeah. more easily. Okay. Well, let's 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 focus on the USA team for a second now. Through the years, the USA team historically has been uh, an incredible team, but just recently, the last few Olympics. The, the wheels have come off really I mean looking back at 1976 that fantastic team spearheaded by Sugar Ray Leonard then you move forward to 1984 the likes of Pernell Whitaker, Meldrick Taylor, Evander Holyfield is there any sign of a of a big haul coming from the USA team this time? I don't know I mean like you say the last Olympics they got one bronze medal which they were worse yeah, yeah. for any Olympics that they, yeah. they haven't boycotted um, you know it's going to be hard I, you know I wasn't I was out in Azerbaijan at the Worlds. I wasn't really that impressed by them. Obviously, Roushi Warren, their flyweight, yeah, yeah, yeah. will be in his yeah. third Olympics. The first American to do that is the is the leading light of the team. But he's going to have his hands full with Selby, Russian, Misha Loyan and, and Michael yeah, Conley. Yeah. Um, their bantamweight, uh, Joseph Diaz, is very good. Again, he's got got his work cut out, and also their welterweight, Errol Spencer are ones to watch, but they only got three qualified through the world, and they do have a big team, 12 men and women, but they got, obviously they got the women who came through the yeah, world, yeah. Um, and they got one wild card, and the rest of the men came through at the American qualifier. So again, it's hard to judge how hard that tournament was. Yeah. I know the European qualifiers was very hard, I'm not sure how hard, yeah. the, if the American one was as hard. So it's hard to actually see them um, doing, doing that well. But you know, to qualify that, they are young, and you know, certainly I've, Rob McCracken thinks they're coming back into things. Right. So okay. He well, like, that's a mental lot. Listen to, he knows, isn't it? He knows <laughs> a lot more than me. Um, so yeah, so yeah, it'll okay. be interesting. You know, the kind of pressures on them in that sense. Yes. Looking more at the tournament at large now. In the, in the professional game, we've all got Floyd Mayweather at the top of our pound for pound list. We've all got Manny Pacquiao there or thereabouts. Who are, who are the amateur equivalents? Who, who are the guys to really look for that in, in, in this tournament? Uh, well, the Ukrainian lightweight, Vasil Lomachenko, is yeah, almost the yeah. clear number one pound for pound. But anything can happen, you know. You could almost say that the number two pound for pound was his, right, his Russian rival at, that, at lightweight, Albert Selimov, who got mm. eliminated from yeah. the qualifier by Liverpool Sam Maxwell, who yeah. was in turn you know, eliminated, yeah. eliminated himself by the Turks. So anything can happen, but yeah. Lomachenko, at the moment, is the man. Okay. If if we fancy seeing a few knockouts, who's who's really a potent hitter there in the games to look out for? Uh, Anthony Joshua does have a big punch. Uh, he stopped a lot of his opponents at the Worlds. Um, at the weight class below 91 kilos, the Russian Artur Peterbiev, he's, he's a monster. You know, he's marmalising <laughs> yeah. people at the Worlds. Yeah. But uh, really powerful. But then he was outboxed by the Ukrainian's brilliant heavyweight Alexander Usyk. That was that was a great great bout. So yeah. I, I, I hope to see see those two yeah. two boxing again. But Serbia can really hit, so he's he's one to watch. I mean, you're going to be you're going to be in the privileged position of being being ringside or there or thereabouts for the games. If you were not, and you could only buy a ticket for one day, which day would you buy a ticket for? And just tell us why. Uh, well, if you can afford it. The, you know, the, the last day, of right. August 12, is, is let, the finals. Let's imagine we can't afford that one. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know how cheap they'll be on August the 6th, but then you've got the quarterfinals, right. women's quarterfinals. I think lightweight and middleweight quarterfinals. And the, the, you know, the interesting thing about the Olympics is, for the boxers themselves, there's such a world of difference to their future lives yeah, and future yeah. careers between getting an Olympic medal and not getting yeah, one, yeah. which makes it, you know, the stakes are so high in the quarterfinals, so that's that's what makes it that's what makes it interesting that's when that's when it's almost everything, yeah. everything or nothing okay finally one last question um, if you had to pick one well no one or two that you th that from this point in time you can foresee them going on to becoming an all-time great maybe winning gold here maybe turning professional multiple world titles give pick us a couple of names out well, we already mentioned Lomachenko. I mean, he won the Olympics in 2008, yeah. 57 kilos. He's up at 60 now. He also got the in 2008 got the Val Barker Trophy, which is the best boxer yeah, yeah. in the tournament. Yeah. You know, he probably he doesn't expect to be awarded it again, but he could well be yeah. the you know the, the the best boxer at this tournament. And that can be got a two-time, two-weight Olympic uh, Olympic champion, and he's he, he's fantastic. Okay, so. 
That brings us to the end of BNTV episode seven, out on location, out in Olympic City, London, 2012. Thanks a lot, John Denon. Um, remember to keep to keep tabs of what J John Denon's up to at the Olympics. Boxingnewsonline.net forward slash Olympics. He'll be posting blogs. It's going to be fascinating. Just keep involved, and we'll see you next week. Hopefully, a bit closer to the action. BNTV episode eight next week.